QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Enter transaction for owner deposit or loan deposit using bank feeds. Let's do it with Intuit. QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Bank Feed Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. View drop down. We've got the hide icon bar. Open windows list checked off. Open windows are open on the left. Reports drop down. Company and financial. Let's open the profit and loss. The P and the L changing the range from 010122 to 123122. Customize it. I'm gonna go to the fonts and numbers to pick up the font to 14, okay, yes, and okay. Then reports again, company financial, but this time the balance sheet standard, customizing it so we can then change the range from a 10122 to 123122. And then the fonts, the numbers need to change up to 14, okay, yes, and okay. Now let's open the bank feeds, banking drop down, bank feeds, the bank feed center would only be there if you got bank feeds turned on, which we have done in a prior presentation. I'm now going to go to the unrecognized items. We're focusing in on the deposits. And so we're looking in on them. Now we've been focusing in on going back to the homepage, entering deposits in such a way in the kind of business where we can use the deposits from the bank feed to record transactions and record the income from there, as opposed to a full service kind of system where we would use the sales receipts even on a cash-based system or the invoices on an accrual-based system to record the sales. So we talked about the pros and cons of doing that kind of system. And if we look at the income statement, you can see here that now we've got our income items lined up by basically, notice we got the name of who paid us, which isn't no the norm in a full service assistant system, but can work well if you're using the deposits and we don't have the capacity to get to those sub ledger reports that are gonna break out by customer or item as easily because of the use of the deposit form as opposed to the sales forms. And so now we got to think of a, about, well, what if I have a deposit that is coming from me, the owner, or coming from uh, the, the bank, for example, with a loan? I want to make sure that if I'm using the bank feeds to record revenue, that I'm not recording those as income, but rather are properly categorizing them as an owner investment or a loan, which are balance sheet items. Now, if you have a system like this that we've been looking at, Usually it would be fairly straightforward if I went into the bank feeds and I said, hey, there's a deposit, a, like a big deposit or something that went into the to the bank and I don't have the memo that said it came from like some other platform, then I would probably pick it up and say, oh, that's me that put the money in. And I would have to then say, okay, what's going to be the other account that I'm going to go to? It shouldn't be an income account. In that case, it needs to be some kind of balance sheet account. If it was a loan, a payable, if it was me, an equity account. However, you can imagine some cash based systems where it can get a little bit more complex because uh, you might, for example, have, you might have a system where you're just gonna say, I'm just gonna make sales and then I'm gonna have cash as my, as my revenue. And I'm just gonna deposit the cash into the bank, wait till it clears the bank and then I'm just gonna record my cash deposits as income. In that case, you're not gonna have as much information in the bank feeds in terms of the uh, detail here and the bank memo. And so it'll be more difficult to distinguish the sales kind of deposits from another random deposit that might happen periodically from either you putting money into your own business or from a loan. 
So you're more likely to mix those up and put the put that as income as opposed to as uh, the proper account of a loan or the equity account. So so those are things that you want to make sure that you have in mind. If we're using the, the bank feeds to record all deposits as income, then what if there's other deposits that aren't income? That doesn't typically happen. It usually happens when you start up the business, the startup capital, and it usually happens when you're expanding the business or having cash flow problems where you have to put money in or take out a loan. What you do not want to do is add those to income on the profit and loss because that'll make your income statement look artificially good which is good if you need a loan or something i mean it's not correct but it would it would look good but it would it would be bad for taxes you might be paying taxes on the money that you put into your own business if you recorded it as income or money on a loan you took out and that wouldn't uh, be good okay so let's go back to the bank fees and just say well how can we record that i'm actually going to go into a recognized area here because i just want to pick up one of these items that i can use and pretend it was a loan so i'm going to look at the deposits and I'm just gonna use like the interest. There was an interest one here. Let's just use that and pretend it was a loan. Where are they? Where's the interest? So here they are. Now these are small dollar amounts, but we'll just pretend that these are deposits from like a loan. So I'm gonna say, okay, so this one interest, if it came from the bank, you know, it would be a loan from the bank. And then the payment side, and then the account side of things shouldn't be income if it was a loan, if it was a deposit from uh, from the bank because it was a loan that's going into our checking account, it should then be going to a loan account. So let's imagine this one was actually a loan. So we're gonna have to set the account up. Let's go to add new account. And this is gonna be typically an other current liability account. Let's make it an other current liability account. And I'm just gonna call it loan payable loan payable and we will set that up that looks good i'm going to save it i'm not going to make a rule related to it uh, because these are not transactions that would happen all the time you're not going to take loans out all the time so it would be a one once in a while type of transaction you got to make sure to pick up it will usually be for a large dollar amount and often an even dollar amount two things that can help you to distinguish and notice it to pick it up to the right location so i'm going to say add and then if I go to the balance sheet, it will of course be a deposit in the checking account. I won't spend a lot of time. Well, there it is right there, boom, the loan. And then I'm gonna close this back out. The other side though, isn't going to the income statement. It's going to the loan payable right here. So you owe it back to the bank, nothing on the profit and loss. In that case, it's not being recorded as income. Now we have a very small dollar amount, but oftentimes loans are significant in dollar amount and if you recorded a significant increase in income, you could be paying a significant amount of taxes if you use that to make your taxes on a loan, which you don't want to do. So you wanna make sure that you have that properly allocated. If I go back up to the balance sheet here, now there's a couple other issues with the loan just going forward with regards to bank feeds. One is the fact that you might have, well, there's some are bank feed regarded and some are just reporting regards. Like one is the fact that you might have multiple loans. So if you have multiple loans, then you might wanna make a parent account called a loan account and then have the multiple loans subsidiary to it and then put the last four digits of the loan number in each account so that you can tie the loan balance out to the amortization table. That's one issue. Another issue is that some loans are gonna be longer than one year in duration Many loans we think of are often installment loans. We pay them off in, in equal installments, monthly payments, but they might last for more than a year. So proper reporting would be that we would have a short-term portion and a long-term portion. You don't typically want to break out a short-term and long-term portion every time you make a payment. That becomes tedious. If you need to break out the short and long-term portion, you might want to do it periodically at the end of the month or year. So we have other courses on adjusting the adjusting process course or section on adjusting process that you can kind of dive into that in more detail. The other thing you got to keep in mind is that you might need an amortization table to properly break out the interest and the principal. And when you have the actual payments for uh, the loan, then there's actually three accounts that will be affected. 
meaning you're going to have to pay down the loan with the payment and you're going to have interest. So you're going to have the checking account decreases, you're going to have the loan goes down and interest expense. And the allocation between interest and the loan will not be the same each time. So when we go into our bank feeds for the payments, you can automate the payments that are coming out of the bank feeds, but uh, you can't make it perfect unless you unless you use an adjusting entry kind of process because the, the breakout, because there's three accounts instead of two accounts that will be affected and the, the accounts of interest and principal will differ. So so there's a couple kind of workarounds we might dive into in a little bit uh, in, in the future on the payment side of things, but just remember that uh, that's another kind of added level of complexity of the loan payments to get into. We're looking at the deposit side more here. Okay, the other deposit that we need to be able to catch would be if we, the owner, are putting money into uh, the system, into coming out of our personal account into the uh, business account. So let's imagine this one was that. So this might be the owner is putting the money in. In this case, we're going to imagine it would then not be going to income again. It would not be going to a loan, but it would be going to an equity account, which is similar to a loan account for the business when you think about it as a separate entity because it owes the money back to you, the owner. So we can then put it into the equity, which is kind of like the retained earnings account that it rolls into, or we can make another account if we want to track the investments in the business in a separate account, kind of like we do with draws. Draws represents money that we're taking out of the business that we're going to we're going to put into a separate account. If we're putting money into the business, we could make another account and do it in a similar fashion. Let's try that. So I'm just going to call it owner owner in, owner investment tab and set up if i misspell anything i apologize the point is that it shouldn't be an income account or an expense account but rather it should be an equity type of account it should be in the equity area so we'll save it and close it and then i'm not going to add any more detail to it we're not going to add a rule and say add this, this is not a transaction we hope to that it's going to happen often and so it would be an increase once again to the checking account similar to what we saw last time and then the other side is going to go not to income, not to a liability, but be part of equity. So you can see we put it in here into investment equity. Uh, j just note that you could have put it into the we could have put it into the owner's equity. Uh, but then you've got to you've got to note that you put it into owner's equity if you're going to try to roll over your financial statements or if you have taxes that are more complex for like a, a corporation kind of tax or otherwise your retained earnings will not tie out from period to period so sometimes it's nice to kind of break out so you could see it in a separate account but just realize that the net income here rolls into the equity account and and usually in accounting like in in book accounting or in uh, school when you learn accounting the closing process for draws and investments, if you broke that out separately, would also roll into equity periodically, possibly at the end of the month or the end of the year. QuickBooks does not do that automatically with these two equity accounts. So these two equity accounts will just keep on accumulating upwards unless you make a manual adjustment rolling them into equity. This account will roll into equity automatically. If I change the date, for example, up to the next day up, now it's rolled into here we still have these two that are not in that equity account also just realize that if you were a partnership then you'd have to track basically these three count accounts you might call a capital account and you'd have to break out one for each partner and track their draws and their investments and their total equity separately because these represent in essence each partner's claim to the net assets meaning assets minus liabilities right assets minus liabilities is the equity so so then then uh, also just note that if you're a corporation then the investment in the company would be in the form of stocks you're selling stocks to the owners so when you break out capital stocks that's like the money that the owners put in to the company versus the retained earnings which represents the accumulation of earnings that have not been given out in the form of dividends which are kind of like draws for a uh, corporation okay so that's the general idea 
So again, we might dive into that loan payment thing, that whole thing with the, with the making the payments of the loans and the bank feeds uh, in a future presentation. So let's that would be with this. I'm going to maximize this one. That's why I can't see it right there. But we might talk about that in the outflows later. Right now, we're just focusing in on making sure you catch those deposits, which are not income related deposits. So you want to be able to find those. Usually you can do that, even though they're not happening all the time by the fact that they're usually larger dollar amount items. And oftentimes they're round in nature, meaning they're in, 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 in thousands or something like that, as opposed to sales, which might have a lot of pennies on it and whatnot. So you can kind of recognize those items, even though they don't happen all the time and make sure that you're properly accounting for them on the balance sheet as loan payable or uh, investment, as opposed to accidentally pulling them over to the income statement as income, in which case your income statement will be distorted and you might be paying taxes on a loan or an, an investment from the owner, which would not typically be good. Let's go to the reports drop down and then accounting and taxes trial balance 010122 to 123122. And just take a look at that fonts and numbers, bringing it on up. Let's go to 16. Okay. Yes. And okay. Just remembering that if we can see the, the, the breakouts of the assets liabilities, which we can see now here in the loan payable, we'll have a credit balance and then the equity accounts and then the income accounts cost of goods sold, which is a type of expense and expense accounts. This is a great report to have open to, to jump back and forth from and to drill in on as it is the balance sheet on top of the income statement without all the subtotals, therefore easier to find the accounts and not have to sort through so much and go to the opening balances or the open windows on the left to find stuff.